Greetings, and in this video, what I'd like to do is talk about air quality, provide some basic information, and also provide you with some information about the impact of fireworks on air quality. We'll talk about the major regulated air pollutants. We'll talk about their effects on human health and the environment. We'll talk about pollution from fireworks, and then I'll give you some information about how to assess ambient air quality so that you can use this information in preparing your policy briefs. So the major regulated air pollutants in the U.S. and also in much of the world are carbon monoxide, nitrogen dioxide, particulate matter, and we break that down and we'll talk about this in a bit, into particulate matter less than 10 microns and particulate matter less than 2.5 microns. We have sulfur dioxide, ozone, and finally lead. The major source of carbon monoxide is incomplete combustion. It's released by vehicles and improperly working furnaces. The effects of carbon monoxide at low levels are headache, nausea, dizziness, weakness, and even confusion and disorientation. At higher level, it actually attaches to the hemoglobin in the red blood cells and inhibits the transport of oxygen throughout the body, resulting in the loss of consciousness and death. NO2 is also produced by the combustion of fossil fuels, it includes combustion of coal, oil, and natural gas. It is also produced from the combustion of petrol or gasoline from metal refining and in, elect <clears throat> in electricity generation from coal-fired power plants. In most cities, about 80% of the NO2 that is released is from vehicle emissions. NO2 increases the susceptibility to respiratory infections. It also can cause nose and throat irrit irritation, and it can cause bronchial constriction, can cause dyspnea, which is the sense of inability to breathe, especially in asthmatic individuals. Now, as I mentioned, particulate matter is often divided by size. And to give you a sense of size of particulate matter, a grain of sand is about 300 microns in diameter. A human hair is about 70 microns in diameter. When we talk about PM10, we're actually talking about that particulate matter that is between 2.5 to 10 microns in diameter. So this is small, significantly smaller than the diameter of a human hair. These mainly deposit in the upper airways and in the trachea. And PM2.5 is called fine particulates. This is less than 2.5 microns in diameter. And <clears throat> this material can actually penetrate deeper into the lungs, actually all the way into the alveoli in the lungs. Sources of particulate matter include pollens, mold spores, all the way to diesel and vehicle emissions. A number of other sources include dust. These are typically larger particulate matter. Um, the emissions from diesel exhaust, vehicle emissions tend to be much smaller. And you can see this range from about 0.1 microns, this is ultra fine material, to greater than 10 microns, and you can see the differences in where that material deposits. The smaller the particulate matter, the more likely it will actually move all the way into the alveoli, it can actually cross the mucous membranes in the alveoli and end up in the bloodstream, which means that it can actually affect target organs and tissues. 
And so too is produced by industrial activity from materials that contain sulfur. So this includes from the combustion of coal and oils. Vehicle emissions tend to be minor a source of SO2. Now SO2 can also, also cause nose and throat irritation, can cause wheezing and shortness of breath on a tight feeling around the chest. It can cause bronchial constriction and dyspnea, especially again in asthmatic individuals. Unlike the other pollutants that we just spoke of, ozone is not released from most sources. It is actually it is formed in the environment, referred to as photochemical smog. And it occurs because of the reaction of NOx, volatile organic sunlights, in the presence of sunlight, moisture, and heat, which is why you typically find higher levels of ozone during the summer. However, the formation of ozone at night as a result of fireworks appears to be by a different reaction, and it's described in this paper that I've cited here. Ozone can cause chest pain, coughing, throat irritation. It inflames the bronchial airways, reduces lung function, and can exacerbate bronchitis, emphysema, and asthma. One of the major sources of lead in the environment was the lead that was added to gasoline as an anti-knocking agent. While lead was banned in 1978, it is in most gasoline formulations, it is still used in, pin, in piston engine, engine aircraft. It is also released during the processing of some ore and metals from waste incineration during lead acid battery manufacturing and actually also disposal and some <clears throat> uh, recycling, and then in lead smelters. Lead is a potent neurotoxin, and the effect on the nervous system very much depends on the level exposure. It also depends on age, so level of develop, <clears throat> human development. It can also affect kidney function, the immune system, reproductive and developmental systems, and the cardiovascular system. Well, the six pollutants previously mentioned are regulated with national ambient standards. The hazardous air pollutants are regulated differently. These are regulated by the National Emission Standards for Hazardous Air Pollutants. And the goal is to protect human health with an ample margin of safety and to prevent any significant adverse environmental effects. There are now 187 hazardous air pollutants that are regulated. These pollutants are actually regulated by emission standards. So they're regulated at the source. However, the regulations also depend on the amount or the mass of hazardous air pollutants that are released by the source on an annual basis. It's important that we consider the effects of air pollution on human health because air pollution kills an estimated 7 million people worldwide every year largely as a result of increased mortality from stroke, heart disease, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, lung cancer, and acute respiratory infections. The World Health Organization data shows that 9 out of 10 people breathe air that exceeds the WHO guideline limits, <clears throat> with low- and middle-income countries suffering from the highest exposures. With smog hanging over cities to smoke inside the home, air pollution poses a major threat to human health and the environment. Now with this project, we're focusing on commercial grade fireworks. Firework <coughs> fireworks are a source of carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, NOx, and sulfur dioxide. 
the colors that make fireworks attractive are actually heavy are caused by the release of heavy metals and these include barium lithium strontium copper and aluminum aluminum these metals don't disappear they're released to the environment they can remain in the ambient air for a period of time they can also contaminate the soils and <clears throat> vegetation uh, on which they fall Fireworks also release a number of organic compounds, and I've provided you with a reference that discusses some of these compounds. Perchlorate can also be released, and a major <coughs> air pollutant resulting from fireworks is particulate matter. Sulfur is also released, and as mentioned, SO2, and potassium can be released from fireworks. These are used in igniting the fireworks. A 2015 study from the National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Administration showed that average concentrations of particulates over a 24-hour period beginning 8 p.m. on July 4th were 42% greater than the days before or after the holiday. However, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency allows states to classify air quality exceedances from fireworks as exceptional events for regulatory reporting purposes. In terms of monitoring ambient air quality and obtaining information from your reports, I've provided you with a number of sources here, and I'll go through some examples of some of the data that you are able to obtain from these sources. The data you will need to present cannot be from the graphs that I'm presenting here. You'll need to download your own data, plot it, and then report it in a way that you feel is most appropriate for the audience. So the USC, for US data, data is available on what is referred to as AirNow. It's um, maintained by the US EPA. And from that, you can obtain maps like the ones I've shown here. You can also obtain data, and you can report obtain data both on an hourly and a daily basis. The downloadable data, though, is only available on a daily basis. You can also obtain Michigan data from the Department of Great Lakes Environment and Energy, EGLE. <clears throat> Actually, it's environment, Great Lakes, and energy. And then you can also obtain international data, for example, from the US Embassy in China and in India. And then there is also government data that you can obtain from both of those countries. Just to give you a sense of the type of data that you can obtain, you can obtain hourly data. Unfortunately, that data is presented graphically. It's not downloadable. But you can <clears throat> go on the Michigan Eagle site. You can obtain this data. Uh, you'll have to re record it manually, but you can, and you can plot that data. One of the advantages of the hourly data is you can see the hotspots. So for instance, here you can see that in Lansing on July 4th, July 5th, and that that actually the night of July 4th, the particulate matter 2.5 concentrations exceeded 450 micrograms per cubic meter. So looking back, the WHO limit is 10, <clears throat> or guideline really is 10. You can also download daily average data. I've plotted the daily average data on the same scale as that previous plot, just to give you a sense of how, how to what level that the PM 2.5 was exceeded on July 4th of this past year. So you can see typical levels are below 
20 micrograms per cubic meter. Yet on July 5th, there was an exceedance in above 450 cubic meter micrograms per cubic meter. From the US EPA site, you will be able to obtain daily average data for a 20 year period. Shown here is the PM 2.5 concentrations. These are calculated from the air quality index, which is actually what was provided. But from here, you can see that even in terms of a 20 year high, that 450 microgram per cubic meter level is exceedingly high. It's about 10 times the highest level observed over the last 20 years. Additionally, you can obtain data for other ambient air pollutants, including ozone and NO2. This is from the Lansing uh, monitoring station. Now note, while there are a number of monitoring stations in Michigan, not all of them collect the same set of data. So you'll need to explore the data available from these monitoring stations. You'll need to determine which ones you plan to use. And from those, you will be able to obtain data from both the US and the um, DEQ, sorry, Eagle website. And finally, you can also obtain data in a map form like this. This is actually from, this is again from the AirNow site on managed maintained by the US EPA, and they provide interactive maps of air quality. You can obtain the map for the current day, and then you can use the archive maps to go back in time and look at air quality over a period of time. And this is map that I obtained during the summer on July 4th through 5th, and you can see the very high levels of PM 2.5 in a number of areas in the US, especially in the Midwest. So in summary, the National Ambient Air Quality Standards are used in the US to regulate the six pollutants that are shown here. Most other countries have similar standards and similar sets of regulations for these pollutants. We've seen that fireworks can release a wide variety of different pollutants from metals to various organics to pollutants like NOx and SO2. We also looked at a number of sources of data on air quality, how you may be able to use that data, the advantages and disadvantages of some of the data sources, and all of this data and all of this information is readily available to you to help you prepare the policy brief on the effect of commercial grade air pollutants, first commercial grade fireworks on air quality and human health.